We are now joined by Ned Coletti, the Dodgers general manager who signed Justin in February of 2014. Ned, there is no way you could have envisioned JT becoming the player he has been for nine years in a Dodger uniform. How do you put into words the impact he's had on this team, the fan base, and really the entire city of Los Angeles? Well, first of all, thanks for having me on, guys. I missed you guys. Uh, Justin Turner, I think from a player standpoint, teammate standpoint, dependable, a gamer, somebody you could always count on. I think from the fan standpoint, really a historic player as you looked at it, and one of their own being from L.A. And lastly, I think for the city of, of L.A., I think that, that J.T. and his wife, Courtney, I think they, they understood their position. They understood that they could do positive things for this community, for this region. And they, they did. And I think that is uh, their ability to kind of figure out where their place was and how they could help people, sincerely help people, I think was as important as all the big hits and all the big plays he made. Ned, I think we forget with all the success Justin has had that when you brought him to spring training, he was in the mix to play second base. When you look back at his time with the Dodgers that you incorporated him into this team, uh, when you s remember back to spring training in 2014 to what he has become now, wh what are the everlasting thoughts of his evolution as a player? Well, he went to work, David. He, he definitely went to work. When we signed him, we had lost Jay Hare. We had lost uh, Skip Schumacher, Nick Punto, Michael Young, some really good players that had evolved into being extra players, so to speak. And I was looking for somebody younger and somebody who I knew could hit, and that was J.T., Candidly, I wasn't sure what the defense was going to be. You're right. He was earmarked for second base. We thought he could play a little bit of short once in a while, a little bit of third. But after he signed, he went to work. I mean, he was in his, what, 27, 28 years old. And it's, it's tough to really get better, dramatically better at that age. But he did. He went to work. He took it serious to be a Dodger. He understood the, the, uh, the, the beauty of it and really the irony of it, that he was from there and had a chance to play there. And he just went to work, went to work on all facets of his game and developed not only that, but into a great leader as well. Ned, you talked about him going to work. Little did we know when you signed him that he was a bit of a notorious slow starter. And then that first month of April, he was kind of a part-time player. You get to the month of May, and I think at one point he's hitting 175. He winds up hitting 383 the rest of the way. But you had a little conversation with him early on. I think it was in that month of May that maybe helped get him going to become the player that he became. Well, I, I didn't live in the clubhouse. I would walk through there every once in a while. Players knew I was around, and I, you know, I, if I had to see them, I knew how to find them. And so I purposely walked by one day because he was scuffling a little bit. Maybe he was trying too hard and whatever the situation was. And I caught him halfway between, and I said, JT, and he goes, yeah. And I said, hey, you're better than this. We need more from you. you got a lot more to give. Relax. Take it easy. You're, you're our guy. So just take it, take it from here. And you're right. From that moment on, when you look back at his month by month through his Dodger career, the first month was a little, a little rocky. After that, he was outstanding and, and took over at third base before too long. Ned, I know in your position, you can't get too emotionally attached to players, but what was the connection with Justin? And are you surprised how much gratitude he still has to you for bringing him to the Dodgers? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. We first really, besides the signing, we really kind of met in Australia where, where he and Courtney were there. We ended up playing blackjack one night. We are staying at a hotel casino there as we got ready to play the Diamondbacks. So I really got a chance to get to know him better. And he was somebody that I started to depend on more and more, not just as a player, but somebody who started to have perspective. And I think that, that that's got invaluable. I've probably been invited to 25 player weddings during my, my career. And I went to two of them. One was Jamie Moyer a long, long time ago. And the other was JT and Courtney down in Cabo. And I think his, his understanding and his respect for what you do out of a front office and his candidness with, with things that he thought could be better or things that he really liked, those kind of exchanges with a, a player that you really respect and a person that you really respect, you know, those are key things, but he's always been grateful, and I've always been grateful for him. And I think when you have the relationship that you have front office to a player, sometimes that can be pretty rare. But in, in his case, you know, I've known his family now for a while, good people, and, you know, it's an honor to know him. It's an honor to see him play, but also an honor to know what kind of person he is and 
and his, his love for the region and his love for the Dodgers and the way he was brought up. Ned Colletti, the man who brought Justin Turner here to Los Angeles, and as they say, the rest is history. JT going down as one of the Dodgers' all-time greats. Ned, thank you so much for taking time to be with us. My pleasure, gentlemen.